And she hits again. And I'm the best. Yes. Yeah. I can play hooky and and ball and Hi. I'm Lydia. I'm your DJ and MC at Blizzard 2006. You know, I love winter. I love being here in Muskoka Woods in winter. I love the snow. I love the trees. I love the cold, crisp air and the way it freezes your snot. And I love meeting God in this place. And you know who else I love meeting in this place? Your team captains. And the other funny, strange people behind the scenes at Blizzard 2006. Testing, testing, can you hear this? I can hear this, it, yeah. Oh, it's I, on. I got my own too. Okay, it's turned on now. Um, I'm here with the uh, Blizzard coach, Bryce the Jam Diamond. What up? Um, I noticed that you have jam written on your toque. So Bryce, what's your favorite kind of jam? Or right. do you prefer like the jelly sort? If I had to choose one, I'd probably say uh, blueberry, blueberry jam. Blueberry oh, jam yeah. is quite nice. It's the gourmet of jams, really. Mm, yeah. It takes a special taste. Mm -hmm. So um, among the other tastes at Blizzard, what is your, uh, your favorite taste Don't when you're here? Don't answer, it's a true question. The taste of the Lord. Taste and see Ooh. that the Lord is good. That sounds yeah. really good. And that's why he's the coach. And that's why you're the coach, because he uh, he coaches us all. Do you have any final words uh, for the students out there on this uh, special features edition? I'm just going to say enjoy the weekend and uh, remember that God is not just here, he's back home too. Mm, true that. Yeah, Next we have uh, the ice. And uh, ice is quite the interesting invention of God, even though it's so heavy and has so much like power and it can like crack stuff and rip things apart, it floats. Okay, baby. Let's stand here. We're gonna win. So, uh, I'm here with Team Ice and uh, they're pretty ice cold, if I uh, understand you correctly. So I was thinking, what is your favorite ice cream? Your thoughts? My favorite ice cream? Mm -hmm. All right, what's your favorite ice cream while he thinks? <laughs> I'd have to say uh, vanilla is very good, but you have to have the chocolate on it. Mm. The best is the um, dipped chocolate ice cream from Dairy Queen. Ooh, that nice. That is the best. Yeah, that's the nice soft stuff. Yes, yes. All right, Daber, your thoughts? <laughs> Mine is the coldest one. The coldest one. The coldest one. What is the coldest ice cream? Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. What does that taste like? Ice cream. Ice cream. Wow. <laughs> that that sounds a little bit threatening, but it sounds like it tastes victorious. What are your thoughts? Well, last year, mm. I don't know if you remember this. But, but we, we got won. twice. Oh, twice. Twice. I think you might need a little reminder of uh, who the Weekend One Ice Captain was, maybe? 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 No? Is someone familiar? And who the Weekend Ice Two Captain was, maybe? Someone? Someone familiar? I'm not sure. Whoa! Whoa. I know I you! I know you do! From the video! The That's champion you're one! The champion! No, ah, you're the champion! No, you're the best! You did awesome! Awesome! Welcome to the podium. All right, let me make this clear. I have no bias. Ice is gonna win. Ice is gonna win. Oh, oh, Moose, don't cry anymore. Blasting storm are here again, and you won't cry alone. Wow, I think ice uh, is pretty delicious. And uh, on that note, we'll see what happens, folks. So here we are with uh, Julia Britton, the hospitality yeah. coordinator. She does a lot of things like behind the scenes. Mm. And uh, you know those flowers or the Timbits or the goodies that uh, you've been receiving this weekend? It's all thanks to her. She is the coordinator of hospitality. So Julia, how long did it take you to grow all those flowers in the, in the, in the winter, in the snow? How do you do that? You know, it's just a labor of love, a lot of, you know, heat lamps mm. and speaking to the plants helps them grow and you know it's really for you it's because i care it's because i need you to have beautiful things in your lives oh true truly and those are beautiful things Thank storm you. is generally about lightning rain hurricanes tornadoes uh aspects of nature that rip things apart 
in a powerful, awesome way that reveals God's power through nature. Look, it's Team Storm. Hey, hey. Hey, Team Storm, how's it going? Not too bad. Pretty pretty good? We're excited. I have heard that you are going to bring it this weekend. That's what I've been Definitely hearing. Definitely bringing That's, it. I've been hearing that too. It's mm -hmm. just going around the whole camp. Oh, so your thoughts, about. your thoughts are in a good place. Yes. So guys, um, I'm noticing this is Friday afternoon. Yeah, You're decorating your team room. The yes. storm shelter we'd like the to The storm it. shelter. Um, how about you uh, enlighten us about your choice of decor on this specific window? Since the storm is coming and it's going to be mm. broad, oh, yeah. we thought we broad. would embrace it's the coming. storm. Embrace the storm. Embrace the storm. So we're going to, you know, just have it out there and have it have like. The display. damage is part of the storm. Exactly, it's and we've just got it's to true. acknowledge it's that. True. And acknowledge really the damage that the storm brings. Yeah. To, to, to the other right. But if one word overwhelming is the word overwhelming. we're going to Do you hear that? They're going to be overwhelming. Right? S. T. O. R. M. S. T. O. R. M. S. T. O. R. M. Go storm. See, that's pretty good. And our next one. We'll give you loads lunch. Okay, ready? So, one. Our name is Storm. Two. A little bit louder. Three. I still can hear you. Four, 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 that's just a little great. That was great, folks. That was great. In similar ways, a moose might have the same sort of effect. It can also do some serious damage in the woods where all the little bunnies and, uh, you know, like groundhogs run in fear because it's a pretty fearsome animal. We are here with Team Moose. Yo, what's happening, Moose, in the, the house? What? The gangster homies of Blizzard. What, what, Moose? Allegedly. Word. So, um,. Your thoughts on the moose? Yo, the moose is a, a very noble animal and it's a symbol of coolness in Canada. Hmm. And in the same way, the moose team is a symbol of coolness at Blizzard 2006. What Woo! moose? What? 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 Indeed. Word. I, I, I think, I think it's too. pretty good that, that you're like the laid back homie. I'm not a laid back homie. This right here is not believable. It's Are called you acting. believing this? This it's is not acting. believable. All you do. Is you do this. <laughs> so I hear that you have a little ditty that uh, you'd like to uh, yeah. share with us. Some some rap. Yeah. I like moose and I cannot lie. You other teams can't deny. When the moose walks in, you know we're gonna win. We're gonna make that noise all night. Moose. Bah. So this is your what? Fourth team on Team Moose? It is my fourth year, and this year we're taking home the cup, no matter what Ice says. This is Shelly's Team Moose year. It is. It's the year of the moose. Ooh. My favorite part of Blizzard is karaoke in the music hall. Mm. That is the best part of Blizzard because I like to sing, and the karaoke is always good times. True that. I, I missed karaoke last time, but I think I will be there because I like holding a microphone. I also like holding a microphone. It just gives you, Lydia. What's your favorite part about Blizzard? Um, that's a good question. Now that I've uh, been asked it, I think my favorite part about Blizzard is uh, just getting away from the everyday. Mm -hmm. There's always something unexpected going on at Blizzard. You might have to run around somewhere, or play games you've never done, or meet with God in a space that's unique. I, I like Blizzard for the spontaneity of the whole thing. And last but not least, we have the blast. Now, I think clearly, when you think of a blast, you think of something that is explosive and powerful and can do a lot of damage. Um, I'm trying to find blast because I really want to do an interview with them. And uh, I can't seem to find them anywhere. And uh, I'm going to start looking for them a little bit. What are you talking about? Um, uh, I found Team Blast, uh, and uh, we, it, it appears to me we, uh, we they've were, been doing something uh, suspicious. Well, folks, Blast, we're just like like electric spark explosion TNT, baby! Woo! You guys are electric. We were just trying to make sure that this was working, and we were just trying to give it a little boost. You know what oh. I mean? Just, that's what we're gonna do to everybody else. A give blast them a energy. Boost, boost of energy. Blast of energy. Oh, you, know what I mean? you heard it here, folks. Blast is electric. They're gonna bring a boost of energy uh, to Blizzard. So uh, let's hear one little blast cheer. 
Tick. 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 Boom! Oh. Amazing! So we're uh, taking it home. Oh! Guys, <laughs> going to the office. Check us out. teams combined produce an amazingly powerful effect and I think when working together they can bring about a lot of power for God's kingdom and that's what this weekend is about folks I'm out all right with this good footage like this I can't talk without a microphone and then every so often go it's Paul Carter oh my god it's Paul Um, I'm sitting here with Paul Carter, the speaker of uh, Blizzard 2006, and when you're watching this, uh, your DVD, remembering the weekend and all that you learned and experienced, uh, you can take away some of the things we're going to talk about and just remember what it was that uh, Paul made you think about, you know, that sort of thing. So Paul, what are some key words or phrases that you think would be really impactful to remember this weekend? Hmm. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the space between a fan of Jesus and a follower of Jesus. Uh, a lot of people identify themselves as fans of Jesus. I mean, it's hard to pick up a magazine or, or watch a TV show nowadays without hearing some sort of positive comment about Jesus. There are a lot of people who are fans of Jesus. But I think this weekend we want to spend a little bit of time talking about a different place than the fan place. We want to talk about the family place, hmm. uh, the family of followers. And so I think we want to spend a little bit of time talking about what does it mean to be in the family of God? Uh, what does it mean to be adopted into God's family as a son or a daughter? I also think we want to talk a little bit about the space between uh, being a follower of Jesus and being a servant of Jesus. Mm. There is a sense in which on weekends like this, God uh, calls us to care about more than what happens to us when we die. Mm. He calls on us to care about what happens to this world while we yet live. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that place as well. Right. And as we continue on from this weekend. And uh, keeping with that, our theme this year is shine. And that word has a lot of uh, biblical references and references to light, to power. And how do you interpret that word and how do you think it's important from, you know, this weekend and in the year to come? Well, you know, Jesus talked a lot about being light in a dark world and uh, functioning as sort of lanterns or beacons. I think, when I think of what it means to be a light, what it means to shine in the world, in, in my mind I always kind of think of there being uh, two lenses on a human soul. Uh, the outside lens is the lens that people see into us. Uh, it's really the lens for people on the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some of us, what we really need to do is, is scrub that clean. We need to give some attention to uh, the extent to which we're making the light of Christ available and present to other people. But there's this other lens, too, that we need to start with, which is uh, the lens between our souls and the face of Christ. Hmm. And for a lot of us, the issue is maybe that there's nothing on the other side of that glass. We've never actually brought the Spirit of Christ, the face of Christ, into our lives. Right. But for some of us, it may just be that we've allowed that lens to become so foggy, to become so dirty, that we don't even see the face of Christ in our own lives. Mm -hmm. so, so, so over the course of the weekend, we're basically going to try and pay attention to those two lenses, uh, allowing us to see the face of Christ. The Bible says that uh, the only source of transformation in the universe is the face of Christ beheld by His children. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We all with unveiled faces, meaning... We all, when we see clearly, we all with unveiled faces beholding the glory of the Lord as though in a mirror are being transformed hmm. by one degree of glory to the next. So we're going to pay some attention to the inner, inner window, to seeing the face of Christ in us, and then we're going to turn our attention to the outer window. And that's making the light of Christ real in us and then making it available to other people. Right, like a lens or a window. Yeah. And uh, hopefully this weekend has been a catalyst event for uh, the people here to just examine their own perspective and self and issues that, you know, might be blurring that, those windows or those lenses. So, yeah, so. Um, do you have any other closing thoughts in wrapping up or proceeding forward after the weekend or in Blizzard in general? What are some good tips? Yeah. 
Well, one of the things I think you have to remember about a retreat like this is it, it really is um, a time of impact, a time of uh, significant change. Uh, sometimes those of us who work on retreats or plan retreats, we talk about ministry being a lot like uh, the work of a sculptor. And uh, a retreat like this sometimes is closer to the hammer blows of a sculptor. Big chunks of rock come flying off. Mm -hmm. The look of people changes. You know, people will come up to you after the weekend and say, my life will never be the same. Yeah. Things about them have changed. But I think what's really important for students to grab hold of is that uh, a sculptor has more than one tool. A sculptor mm -hmm. doesn't just work with a hammer. Right. Uh, a master sculptor also works with sandpaper. And uh, I think for a lot of students, uh, they're going to find that they need to connect themselves to some sort of a, a regular ongoing community right. of care and spiritual yeah. direction so that they can experience the sanding as well. So mm -hmm. that you can't really build a spiritual life just on hammer blows. Yeah. You need the regular reg sanding effect of a self-directed and community-directed spiritual life. And so I suppose in closing, I would encourage all the students that were here uh, to investigate with the help of a leader or a coach or a youth pastor what it means to build a sustainable faith journey. What, is, mm. what does it mean to submit yourself to the sanding and polishing process? And to actually change your life and yeah. continue on decisions that you might have made this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you for being part of this awesome weekend. And thank you, too, for joining us uh, here by the fireside and at Blizzard 2006. And we wish you a great and shining year to come. Here's <laughs> <laughs>